Hello and welcome back to the Bucharest Minor CIS Qualifiers where we are still on this game and we have a draft coming up for you guys and don't worry because guess what we got in-game sound we're doing it this huge day. huge don't worry guys everybody we can calm down now the in-game sound has been sorted out it was actually there before which is very quiet but don't worry yeah the production team heard your complaints yeah, and, uh, yeah they... i mean they were working on it all last series but of course you know they need to wait for the break to come in and uh get the mechanics out to uh to really fix the situation <laughs> get the but... screwdrivers out and... yeah exactly yes. all sorts to, uh, get the power tools going but um, we have a draft going on in game two of win strike versus namiga and uh namiga i mean i've seen defensive drafts in my life and uh, this is probably the most defensive opening you can possibly draft in dota 2 yeah, Dazzle Oracle, that's an interesting one. I mean, it probably shows that the Dazzle's going to be playing core. Whether it's two or two or three, we'll yet to see. But, I mean, it could still be a position. Uh, but the Oracle obviously picked up because of the Grimstroke. Uh, really nice to be able to take that Inkswell off uh, almost instantly if you can. And obviously the Sanking as well. If you can, uh, what's the second spell? Is it Fate's Edict, the second, second skill? Never remember Oracle skills. What's They're also this? horrendous. Oh, all right, let, let me try and get all the Oracle skills. We've got False Promise, which is ultimate. Yeah. You got Fate's Edict. Yeah, it's Fate's Edict. And then there's... Oh. What's... Jesus, this is harder than I thought. I should yeah, know exactly. this as well. Everybody always forgets at least one of them. Yeah, I've forgotten two. Well, there's... Purifying I, I Flames. I really what they look like. Purifying Flames, that's it. No result. <sighs> result is False Promise. Yeah, False Promise. But the, I'm missing the, the route. Oh, hey, you've said it already. Fortune's End. Fortune's End. Fate's Edict. Purifying Flames. Come on. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so obviously the face is really good at reducing the magic damage or stopping all the magic damage. Sorry, from the sanking and the grim stroke. So. So it's a decent counter against both these heroes. But again, like if I look at both those two opening twos from both teams, I know that I'd rather definitely be playing wind strikes too. Uh, the dazzle and the oracle from Namiga. Nature's prophet. Okay, something a little bit different. My, my guess is that it would probably be a support prophet, but we'll have to see. Could still be an off lane, but I, th I think you probably want to play the Sanking as the three. Could be a core Nexus Prophet, one or two. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but I mean, this this hero is another fantastic laner, and that's what kind of wind strike shouting at me right now. It's just we're gonna win your lanes. What are you gonna do about it, Namiga? We're gonna try and do the exact same thing as last lane. Win our lanes and then run down yours. So Namiga, pull out an Earth Shaker. Uh, this is a hero we have not been seeing a lot of recently. Yeah, it's really greedy in the laning stage, though. That's why. I mean, my guess is it'll probably be position four, but again, still open, could play it as the three. You know, we saw Alliance do that at the Major, where Boxy uh, managed to theorycraft the Axe first Shaker instead of the Blink, which was uh, very interesting. It uh, gives them some catch as well, which they lacked last game quite a lot of. I'm hoping Five seconds. could actually find some hero kills early on here. Gasp. Wouldn't that be a revolution? The Undying doesn't just chase down with Decay and kill. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, so showing a, a bit more aggression. I mean, I like it. I haven't seen the SJK in this patch yet, but I mean, he wasn't really changed, was he? No, not really. I mean, lanes are still important, though. That's my only worry when you play the Surf Shaker 4, especially when you're against you know, these heroes that are so strong early on in the game. Right, right. And Ooh. now, oh, this is Windstrike. Pull in down the Arc Warden fourth pick. No hesitation there from them, really, as uh, they get themselves i mean they already have the uh shaker who offers a decent amount of catch and that is another unit which is going to be doing damage with that uh with that ultimate you always got to be careful of that with the air shaker you don't just want to get yourself one boat comboed and uh with the i mean the profit treants will likely be no longer nowhere near the heroes this game just because you don't want to get remaining. echo slammed but um you know that that extra unit it, it makes all the difference and i believe it counts as a hero unit as well i'm not 100 percent on that but yeah uh, this wind strike lineup though has so much wave clear and split push potential as well. Like the lanes are just going to be constantly shoving towards Namiga's gaming, Namiga gaming side at the moment, which looks really scary. Like it's okay, obviously you get to farm towards your base, which is a little bit more safe. But it feels like wind strike are just going to take over the map because so quickly this game already. Yeah. Especially, and they can just make so much space for Art Warden to farm as well. We saw Silent playing this yesterday. I think the games we cast, he won one and lost one. Art Warden games. He, he played it pretty well in general. He goes for the you know the greedy standard build though with the Necro book, uh, Necro one into Midas into Maelstrom into uh, Mjolnir and then Boots of Travel I think. Just farm up, and at some point in this game he's going to become an absolute monster. Uh, I think Yell possibly. I think it might be okay. Again, something that allows you to get on top of the Arc Wardens the most important thing here. Radiant team ban. 
Spectre and Rider that's, King. That hero is certainly going to do it. The Spectre coming out from the Mega Gaming, and that haunt is going to allow them to get on top of both this Prophet and this Arc Warden. This is a strong Spectre game if I've ever seen one. It is, apart from when you look at the heroes in the laning stage. <laughs> Oracle is... doesn't do anything in the laning stage apart from defensive saves. Earthshaker doesn't, you know, unless you're GH or, you know, Yapsa, when you just get these amazing rotations in all the time. It, it doesn't really work out all the time. Like, it's a greedy position for you. You need your blink before you really come online. Dazzle's the only really one at the moment that's going to do strong things in the lane. So I'm a little bit worried for Namiga. They've got to pick some strong hero here that can keep the tempo going for them so that uh, Spectre doesn't just get run over at the start of the game. They need something that can fight early on. I'm, uh, I'll be honest. I'll look at these two lineups. When you have... In, when you're in the second phase of the draft, right, and you can counterpick each hero, it feels like you, your four heroes should be stronger than their four heroes because you've had the counterpick, right? right? But I look at this, and I feel like Windstrike have the better lineup still. Yeah, it, it's... I mean, yeah, as you say, how did Namika win these lanes? Like, and laning stage is still really important. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely picking up what you're putting down. This is not looking good for Namiga, so we'll see what they can pull out um, for this last pick. I mean, they need something which can basically somehow destroy the mid lane and then somehow win their side lanes as well. I mean, Ten seconds remaining. at the same time, though, Winstrike do have to absolutely crush these side lanes Five because if they don't run down Namiga, you know, this Spectre's going to come online regardless. We always, we always see it, the Spectre, if you don't finish off this game. Also, with the threat of the Earthshaker as well, you know, one Wombo Combo team fight, or even just one good team fight for Namiga with a decent initiation from the Earthshaker, follow it with a Haunt, and all of a sudden this game's going to turn around. So, Windstrike, they really do need to crush this laning phase, oh. and then they need to hold themselves off, and now they go for the Rubik, and Mofara has oh, uh, no. <laughs> face in the hands, not looking good. Not happy with this one at all, are you? The thing is, if, if they pick Rubik into a good matchup, then it might have been fine, but Windstrike have this last pick here. If they just pick something that's okay against the Rubik, then... I mean, it could still be Dazzle mid, and then they play the Rubik as the 4 and the Earthshaker as the 3. But again, that sounds like such a greedy lane as well. Like, when you're playing against this Nature's Prophet or Grimstroke in the laning stage, the side lanes are going to be so hard to play into. They are two really good lane-winning supports, this Grim and Nature's Prophet, so... I think Windstrike have so many different options here that they can go for. Yeah, th okay, this is it. They're just going to run at your buildings. <laughs> Spectre yeah. needs time to come online. Earthshaker needs a little bit of time to come online. Good luck fighting into that uh, Windstrike lineup. At least they have Fade Bolt to clear creeps. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's they got decent wave clear, and they've also got an Earthshaker. I mean, as I say, you know, whilst it doesn't look like a good game for the Mega of pre kind of 20 minutes, this one big team fight could change things around. No pressure. And sunlight on the Earthshaker. He's their mid laner. Okay. Mid Earthshaker versus the mid Lycan. So it's four Rubik, five Oracle. Do you not just put the Arc Warden mid now against the? Sh I guess no. You, you probably still want to put the Lycan mid, and then just put Silent up against this. Uh, you don't want to put the Lycan up against the Dazzle, so just put the Arc Warden there instead. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, if if they get to like 30, 35 minutes on Namiga, they have a decent chance if the Spectre has any kind of farm. But again, their lineup just feels like it's so lackluster with what it does. Yeah, it's, they've they've dragged themselves into a very very tricky game where there's one very small win condition. It's it's tough, but hell, if they can pull it off, then I'll be damn impressed, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. I mean, it's going to be spectacular if they do, right? I think mm -hmm. honestly, like I'm excited to watch this game just to see if they can pull off this ridiculous combo. I mean, also Earthshaker mid is always very hype. Uh, excited to see whether he goes for the blink or just runs straight for the Aghanim. This is uh, a lot of options. Also, I hate to flame Windstrike every time we cast them, but if there's one <laughs> team that can make a really silly mistake at the moment when they're ahead, it's Windstrike that will mess up the game. Yeah, sorry boys, like, we, we love you, but... Yeah, oh, yeah, I love watching them. They're super fun to watch because it is so 50-50. Like, yeah, sure. It's crazy, but I feel like I flame them all the time, and I don't, you know... Oh, yes, but we're, we're, very, we're very critical to... Uh, to... Please don't and... beat me up, Iceberg. <laughs> yeah, no, of all the teams to be critical, right? You want to choose the one with the boxing, <laughs> uh, boxing player in the mid lane. Prepare nice one, Mofo. Uh, I'm separating myself from this situation now already, by the way. I, I never say anything bad about Windstrike. In fact, <laughs> they're all great, and Iceberg is a god. So, coming into this game, number two, Namiga have to pull off the team fight of their lives somewhere around the 10 15 minutes in order to pull this one back from the laning phase. If they do have a good laning phase, which, I mean,. Maybe you're being a little bit critical, actually. I don't actually hate this uh, this this bottom lane, which I believe is going to be Dazzle and uh, probably Astral. Look at this clarity this usage right. again, though. Silent. 
than we saw oh, yesterday. Yeah. Spiking that is, up them spark rays, baby. You just buy the clary at the start of the game, just start laying those spark rays down ready for the rune spawn. Oh, and he's actually <laughs> leveled up the poison touch, the fool. He should have gone shallow grave so that they can get the rune. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I love this trio as well, just taunting like, them from the other side. <laughs> it's like, follow the light, go for me. <laughs> And this sanking Grimstroke top should just be able to secure these two runes by themselves so easily. Yeah. If you're up against the Spectre, what's he? The track's just sitting inside the carry hole here. I almost feel bad. Carry hole. Yep. <laughs> so that's what I've named it. But they're going to get three runes here. Ranked by the Oh list. no, it's already oh, over. They're going for four. Huh? Why not? I mean, I don't. Uh, Chosen One is going to get this rune. He sits inside it and uh, we'll pick it up. Actually, Yamich managed to pick up the one at. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the raid. Come on. Sorry, <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> I saw Yamich, a UD, a Yamich. I was like, wait a minute. That's not Wind Strike, but it is Wind Strike. Of course, uh, getting rid of uh, No Fear and uh, replacing him with Yamich. And, yeah, we've, we've seen okay gameplay from Yamich. I haven't seen anything which made me go, good lord, this guy's oh, good. But yeah, I don't know if you saw it, by the way, but No Fear was playing in a stack with Funic in the open qualifiers for this. Uh, Wind Strike absolutely destroyed them, and I think No Fear got a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't feel good, does it? You lose to your old team. You want to put them in the bin, but wasn't happening. Sanking takes Caustic at level 1, by the way. We see this usually against melee heroes now. Instead of the Sandstorm at level 1 with the long cooldown. Finding up, rooting up Yamich here. This is just going to be a very aggressive lane, which is exactly how Windstrike want to play it. I mean, they're against the Spectre. You want to keep this guy out of lane, keep him busy, and keep him not hitting creeps. That is the dream of Windstrike, and, uh, well... That is probably what they're going to be able to do as well with these heroes as uh, Yamich comes in around the back with the Stroke of Fate early level, just constantly throwing out the harass. Actually lands it straight onto Fishman here. Fishman could be his trouble as Nongrada comes in with the Burrow Strike as well. The right clicks, the quick uh -oh. uh, dispel on himself here, and the right clicks will not be enough to bring down this Oracle, but still getting him rather low. The core stick will be popped as well. Uh, meanwhile, Silent down in this bottom lane on the Arc Warden, just having a nice time, doing Arc Warden things. He's uh, probably going to be farming up okay. Um, Namiga need to also put on a lot of pressure here, but against always want to fly on his uh, on his Nature's Prophet. Like he can just he can just fight here. And Astral is actually forced away in a, a really good direction. Yeah, Spark Rift placed excellently there. Trees are just following Astral around. So get out my lane. Yeah. <laughs> He's losing the harass war and the nature of profit isn't even attacking him. That's kind of bad. I mean, this Spectre's getting a decent amount of farm top, though. I know a lot of those were neutrals there, but even so. And the Earthshaker should be having a decent time mid, in all honesty. Uh, this lane, this match is pretty easy for the Earthshaker. They should just trade farm, though, if anything. And Lycan has that region of in lane as well from the Feral Impulse. Especially when it gets to level 2 Feral Impulse. It'll be fine. Yep. Should be uh, alright lane as Sunlight comes down with the Enchant Time. You, you go for the... Uh... Aftershock or the Enchanter in this, this lane? In general, I would probably go... I'd oh, probably courier! Go always want to fly, comes oh. in behind and gets a courier. Not even with a TP, just doing it on foot. The old-fashioned way. Did he kill it before the courier got his items to the Earthshaker? I think he did, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yikes, That's uh, that feels bad for the Earthshaker. Uh, I, I'd probably put a second point in Enchant Totem in this lane, by the way, and then max out the Aftershock. Okay. Or might, maybe even three. Depends how the game goes. God. Three points in Enchant Totem. Gotta smack some fools around, dude. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Iceberg, you know, he's, he's, he's a melee hero. He's also going to get himself some wolves if he does that as well, which is going to help. Meanwhile, Arc Warden dropping low in the bottom lane to the Chosen One here. But the Chosen One can't find the damage. And with that flux damage coming through, always want to fly with the right clicks as well. Chosen One going to drop very low, but Astral will be able to chase him off. So Windstrike losing a lot of health. And uh, as well, the Chosen One drops fairly low as well. And they're pinging out Silent. I'm not sure what they can do about this, though, because, I mean, what do they have? Fade Bolt and Shadow Wave? If he gets too close to the creeps, then maybe he could just get blasted here, but it's unlikely. They actually get the lift off. This should be Silent actually dead. But they're holding off. They just do it with the right clicks. Okay, all right. I was about to criticize and say maybe he should use a Shadow Wave, but never mind. They get the kill easy peasy. And, yeah, uh, I, I don't know how this top lane's going so well for Namiga, though. I'm, I'm very surprised that this Sanking, uh, uh, sanking Grimshaw can't just owning the lane. It was like uh, up against this Oracle, he with the the Fortune's End being very good at getting rid of that Inkswell. Yeah, it does help. It does help. Of course, uh, it doesn't immediately get rid of it. It does trigger off the uh, the active ability, so it, it does throw out the stun regardless. We don't always want to fly. It's going to TP away from this one. Gets himself to safety as a chosen one tries to hunt him down. Flux being super annoying with these uh, with these damn treants as well. Chosen one just constantly under harass damage here, but you know he is a dazzle. He does have a, a nice nice little heal. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Sunlight's dropping kind of low to Iceberg here, but 
will still find himself a bit of CS. Falling behind a little bit on the CS, though. Yeah, uh, that's, the, that's the career kill, though. I mean, it made such a difference to this Lycan's lane. He's having a much better time now. Oh, with the haste stream. Eight in the top lane. Oh, top lane as well. They're diving the Spectre here by the looks of it. Inkswell comes out. The Oracle, actually. Yeah, he's dropping pretty low here. Bow Strike as well. Nothing to heal him up, so he's just going to have to go down here. Zitrax isn't exactly healthy either, but the two heroes on Windstrike do not have enough health to keep fighting us, nor do they have enough oh, mana. They're going well. in with the Salve. Yeah, they're going for it. Salve is up. Phantom Embrace onto Zitrax here with the Bow Strike as well. Stroke of Fate, and down goes the enemy carry. That is your Spectre falling down. That is not what they want. So, uh, you just you just praise him for having a good lane. Meanwhile, always want to fly down and bottom dies, but as does uh, the Chosen One as well. Now it's going to be Astral versus Silent, but Astral does not look very healthy here as he has to dodge out the way of the Spark Race, the Treants, the Treants? But careful, buddy! Oh, oh dear! Oh, dear him, dear me. He got greedy, went for the Bounty Rune, and paid for it with his life. It greed doesn't what? pay, kids. Why? Why would you do that? There's a fight around Top Rune as well. They're trying to go on the Oracle here with the uh, Phantom's Embrace. Yeah, and they, they get him. Why, why would you do? I, I'm so confused as to why the Rubik just did that, though. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. Oh, that is too good. Boy. Silent, uh. That's not silent. Sunlight gets his uh, bottle off the courier finally, though, by the way. So, uh. At least he's got that, got that going for him now. Bottle lane, they're just trading it. Well. Seems to have evened out a little bit here, though. I mean, I say that, they're 3k up in net worth on Wind Strike, but <laughs> like, in terms of CS, it's pretty even. But then you look at the net worth chart, and Spectre has absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's a pretty grim sight, and that career kill in the mid lane really meant that it really shut the Earthshaker down, you know? Not getting these active runes as well, kind of burns, picking up that bottle too late. I mean, it's it's just not looking good for, uh, for Namiga, um, yeah, as kind of expected. Shaker, probably one of the more rune-dependent heroes. We talked about Puck yesterday being played by one of the teams, I can't remember who it was. Uh, you really want those active runes to be able to make plays, but these Lycan Wolves and the Nature's Prophet are doing a really Ulti good job. In the of bottom lane, them. Iceberg's going in. They want to chase down the Dazzle here. He immediately throws down the Shallow Graves. He's going to go for the TP out. Well, it's still on cooldown, so if he wants to, he cannot, and he's actually just going to fall. As all this damage coming in from all directions, it's a full onslaught in the bottom lane. And Astral, he's running through the, the trees. trees, but the big bad wolf is chasing him down. This little red riding hood is actually going to get away. The Rubik does survive. <laughs> the tree is just blocking the lichen in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, no, 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 can't get past. No, never mind. Countered by his teammates. Uh, <laughs> they're actually going to make a play onto Iceberg here as Chosen One takes to the front lines on this Dazzle. But oh. Windstrike are coming in pretty hard onto Astro, and he's just going to die on the front lines. Uh, sunlight with a though. beautiful little fissure there. Is it enough to finish off Iceberg, though? Doesn't look like it is. And Amiga charging hard, but the Spark Wraith going to do a ton of damage. Never mind. Iceberg blown up. Silent trying to run away from this one as well. The Zitrax giving chase here. Where is that dagger? It's on cooldown for a very long time, and he doesn't have the mana. But they have the slow with poison touch. Keep refreshing this bad boy, and Silent should drop. But where's the support coming under the tower? There's nothing coming in for him. Silent is a goner. And the Mega find themselves two return kills on the two cores. This is absolutely They get the Rubik vital. in the mid lane, though. He salves up. Oh, he goes down two. Okay, okay. Well, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a four position Rubik. Not the most important thing in the world. They did get a lot of damage done to this mid tier one. But yeah, I agree. And then we go, they get these two big core kills. They get the Arc Warden. They get the Lycan. And although they took a bad fight at first under that tier one bot tower, they do get the uh, some kind of return. Even if Spectre did have to rotate down himself as well, you know. It would have been really nice if you had that level 6 up at that point to be able to just haunt him instead so he could TP back to lane, but... Yeah, but then again, you know, you're, you're in XP for both the kills and that is the absolutely vital thing. Yeah, true. And now has a level 6 to play with as well, so... Life is good. Life is good. Wait till the Necro books come out, though. That's going to be the scary point. When, uh, when Silent and, uh, and Iceberg both get their Necro 1-up. Uh, it's going to be scary, especially with these Treants as well from Always Wanna Fly. It feels like they can just run down lanes and just take towers all over the map. Yeah, Sunlight needs to have a really, really beautiful game on this Earthshaker. But, you know, heading towards that Blink Dagger. Yeah. With this Invis Rune, can just drop the Echo onto Iceberg here. Probably... Mm, yeah, I mean, he's got the Helm of the Dominator. There's, there's six creeps here, dude. Uh, he's, he's not interested. He's he coming in to, to help out tier one. Yeah. Okay, okay. That is a very patient play, and I'm not even sure he's going to get there in time. They don't have the Fortify, and Silent can just leave his illusion here to do the job. Oh, the Sprout! Oh, what? Did they even mean to get in there? They saw him with they the did. Sentry Ward. They did. 
And, well, the Invis rune, all that waiting, all that time, it all goes to nothing. Uh, Chosen are actually falling pretty low to this one. They do jump forward onto always want to fly. Okay, they should get something. Even the Horn committed. They're going to Yamich as well, but gets himself stunned up by the Inkswell. Now, I'll chase Sunlight. Where is that Fissure? It's still on cooldown for a pretty long time. Dagger going to help out, though, as they chase down Yamich. Can they finish him off the Grimstroke? Looking low. Meanwhile, the Iceberg is chasing. It's going to find that kill. And now the Echo Sam comes in. Zip tracks low, but might just escape. No, always want to fly with the right click. It's not enough. The Spark Wraith isn't down in time. Zitrax being chased by the Treants. Meanwhile, Astral does actually drop. Some light on Shaker. He's trying to bottle up through the ticks. Ooh. Oh, no, 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 always no. want to fly as there, <laughs> playing the Keeper. Meanwhile, Oracle, he went too deep for this one. He just wanted to find the kill on Silent. Instead, he's going to die himself. And this Namiga losing a lot of heroes in this middle lane. Double kill. It's 10 minutes in. Their 5k net worth up on Windstrike. They really need this Shaker Blink now to be able to take fights. That's the biggest thing here. The problem so is, when he gets this Blink, he's so reliant on his initiation. Like, if he takes one bad fight when he gets this Blink, it's going to be really hard. Because he has no stats to work with. It's not like he's even got double bracer or anything on the shaker. So, it's all about this blink echo now when he can get that online. The naked blink. Erotica by sunlight. <laughs> we win strike. Pushing up this top lane with these treants. No surprise here. They're just going to be pushing and pushing and pushing. That is the name of the game. And if they want to win, that is what they're required to do. So it's not like they're just so far ahead. They're like, ah, oh, might as well take some towers. No, this is required for them to take this match. Weren't they 5k up a second ago? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, how know. much are they up now? Uh, they, that'll be 8k, my friend. Meanwhile, oh. chosen one, he gets in too deep as Iceberg takes him down. All he wanted was a tower, and all he found was his demise. But there is a bit of a gathering in the top lane from the Mega. But of course, these Treants doing their job, and also the Spark Wraith as well, going to split off that ramp. So, Windstrike easily back out of this one. Iceberg getting kills when he doesn't even have his ult. Up. Oh! oh! <laughs> <laughs> the timing of that pause. That is some like cancelling the TP just as the pause comes out as well. Okay. That's uh, some grief right there. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that doesn't feel too great. Uh, can, he, can he see it? Okay, he can see him. Just farming, dude. Farming the camp, but he fished the wrong way. That was all. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, okay. He might so... be in trouble here, though. The, the silent clone could just... <laughs> Damaging. You have to be a little bit careful here on the shaker. That's true. Where is the follow-up? All right, chat. Who's going to die? Type 1 if you think Silent's going to die. Type 2 if you think Sunlight's going to die. Type 3 if you think they're both going to die. We'll tally up your results and production team will send out rewards to all the winners via official um, Nomad Casting Hub <laughs> pins. Yeah, it's badges. like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. If you win, you get a free <laughs> tour around the production facility. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's it's deep, you know. All the servers and all the <laughs> technicians. All right, and oh, that was boring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Okay, okay, nice sunlight. All right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. That, that was so dull. Damn They're it. gonna get this bot tier. I thought I thought that pause was gonna come off, and you know, it'd be like uh, you know, when the wrestler like drops his hand down, and the the fighters just come in and start brawling with each other. I thought it was gonna be like that, but <laughs> they just walk away from each other. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to thoroughly debate you there, but. Well, no production facility tours for you. Uh, Sanking's going pipe, by the way. So even if they do get a good echo off, if he activates the pipe first on Shaker, it doesn't make a difference. Okay. Well, yeah, here we's done. Follow up with a horn. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that Spectre horn's going to do so much damage. <laughs> <laughs> the Spectre with her, uh, her, her morbid, no, her Yash, no, her face boots and all the venom. I like what the Rubik's doing, though. Do you see he stole the uh, Lycan Wolves? And he's just following Iceberg around with them. To keep taps on him, make sure he knows where he is all the time. Yeah. I mean, the big thing to do is is, is try and steal last hits with it, of course. Yeah, of course. That's the full grief. <laughs> this uh, this dire vision is really good though for Namiga Gaming. They see, you know, a lot of plays are going to be coming onto their side of the map. Vision that they have, so at least they'll see their demise. <laughs> they'll, they'll see their death coming. Yeah. Meanwhile, fine. in the top lane, there's an epicenter coming out onto Zitrax, but Zitrax is gone as he just daggers himself out. Chosen one actually TPs in okay, to the epicenter good. and is taking a fair amount of damage here. Meanwhile, uh, always want to fly, just comes on the back and blows up Fishman. The Chosen one's still trying to fight up with Non-Grada, but that's just not going to work. Dagger being thrown by Zitrax, thinking of coming into this one, but doesn't oh. really want to commit. Can't really blame him, to be honest, as his two teammates just TP'd and immediately died as the Chosen one spams out okay on the chat wheel. In my head, I was like, oh, that looks okay. And then they were just two heroes just dying to Sandstorm, basically. And Sanking's got this hood, so he doesn't take any damage. But yeah. they don't have any physical damage to kill him off. Oh, going always, always want to fly them. That's a double damage. He's got an echo if he wants to kill. No, he does not. I lied. I lied. The wolf actually 
gets it from Astral. That's pretty insane. Iceberg gets a tier two in the meantime, though, in this bot lane. Yeah, we saw always one of the flyers. Sorry, Yamich yeah, and uh, Iceberg just pushing down this bottom lane. I was oh, I was really hoping that Silent would build a Necro 3 on this Art Warden as well. Like, normally, you obviously would never see this, but they just keep the book at Necro 1 normally. But this game, just end. Do a Necro 3, just run down lanes. <laughs> like, that's like he's going to blink in a Necro and he's just going to kill himself to all the Necro books. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> the Echo and Die strat. Yeah. That's the, that's the best way to farm. Iceberg, they might catch him here. In comes that root, and they're actually just going to drop down the Echo. It's not doing enough there. They've only brought him down to half HP. They need a little bit more. The lift is out, but the Inkspell as well. And now uh, the little doggy's just going to run. And then she runs back in. Sunlight blown up. Fishman the Grave comes out just about in time, but is it enough? No, it's not. Burst Strike comes through, blows up the Chosen One, and down goes Fishman as well. Wind Strike, they do more than decimate Namiga. They tear them limb from limb. Okay, so they just found a, a Lycan by himself. They used everything that they had to try and kill him. Apart from Horn, I'm pretty sure they still wouldn't uh, have killed if, him. If only they popped Horn. <laughs> Damn. Then they would have got that one kill. Yeah. Oh, there's an Arcane Rune as well. Oh, God. Yikes. There's going to be uh, many more Necros, many more Wolves. Oh, that is too if he had ult, it would be even better. But expect to go and farm. He's going Radiance. Almost there. Uh <laughs> yeah, in, in an abstract term. I, I, I'm wondering whether Windstrike even bother going Roche here, or whether they just end the game. The thing is, normally you would want to go Roche in a game like this, but in this game specifically, like you're just giving them more time if you go in Roche. So you might as well just try and end the game now. There's the pipe. Aha! Here's the strat though. He just fishes. It. What, what, how do you play against this? How do you push? Just fish it off. They can't get into the enemy base. <laughs> Spectre's just gonna farm, and then they, they just can't get inside. And they've also got the sandstorm out on Astral, who is. <laughs> Yeah, they are gonna rush. Okay, fair enough. All right. Oh, okay. Where's uh, where's Spectre? Okay, yeah, she's doing her thing. Even close to that radius. Wow. Now. Jeez. Somebody slow the Spectre down. This, if you just look at the net worth so of a dire side, in comparison to this Lycan, Shaker, we like we said. Okay, he has a bracer now as well, but like, if he doesn't have Echo up, he's basically not a hero. Even though he's top of net worth on his team, Spectre's not a hero at the moment either. And Dazzle's sitting below all the Radiant heroes in terms of net worth. He has a Necro 1. Okay, so he can push lanes out a little bit better. And maybe take fights a little bit better, but... I just... Where's the damage coming from? Surprisingly slow Roche from Windstrike, but I mean, there's there's no interruption. They take it. I mean, without the Echo Slam, it's just not really possible for uh, Namiga to fight. And with the Echo Slam, it's just not really possible for Namiga to fight, so... Yeah, Silent has the Midas now as well, so looking towards the late game for Mark Warden. <laughs> The, the 25 minute late game, I reckon. <laughs> um, can we just get a reminder? Who was the team that beat Navi again? In the open qualifiers. Was it these guys? No, I don't think so. That's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm being really harsh to these guys. I mean, they did they did play some decent Dota no, games. I, there, I, they... To be fair, this is this is the worst I've seen Namiga play in a while. Yeah, which yeah. is a real they... shame. I mean, I enjoy watching them play. They're a good team, but. They just haven't, you know, they haven't really turned up so far today. They're going to be kicking themselves for it. Well, Dazzle's got a Necro Book of his own, so he can push out some side lanes. It's, it's, it's honestly quite nice to have yeah, it's all right. when you're defending this high ground because you can do some risk-free pushing with that. Pipe now up on the Sand King, though, so if he gets this off in time, then these, these Echo Slams are going to feel even less overwhelming. Uh... Is it Trex? Oh dear. Oh dear, he's got the wand. Is it enough? And okay. now actually Sunlight jumps in for the save. It's tanky use. Okay. Thanks. He doesn't take any damage. <laughs> non they're just pounding into him here. And non is just taking it. He's like, what yeah, are they doing? This is, this is fine. This is fine. Uh, Sunlight's actually the one dropping low here. They uh, they double <laughs> the burrow strike back onto non -Grada, And non is <laughs> still just like, oh yeah, they put a sentry down. I don't really care. And he survives four heroes just laying into him like that. He Meanwhile, up at top, wants. Iceberg is just jumping in, trying to chase down Zitrax again. Nobody giving Zitrax any space to move around this map at all. As uh, they go in hard from this one. He's and... pushing two sets of racks at once. Yeah, Silent on the bottom lane. Iceberg on the top lane. It's very difficult for Namiga to defend this one. I mean, they barely have any wave clear as it is. Never mind two sets. There's always want to fly deep in down here as well. Three heroes in the bottom, two heroes in the top. Math does check out, and it... Oh, oh no. no! Sunlight. Did it get cancelled by an Arc Warden Spark Wraith? I uh, think it might have. Yeah, let's just say it did. Something cancelled oh, it anyway. No, they're there's, getting, there's no way. 
They're getting ripped apart oh, to pieces. Uh, getting... Oh. Okay. Sanking is him. done. Oh, Zitrax got... Okay, they get the kill. They get the kill. Sanking is down. I repeat. Sanking is down. Always want to fly. They just got him as get well. One Don't more, lose get that top, Rax. Just, just focus on the kill. Come on. Always want to fly. Get him. Chasing down. Yes. Right, right. Now go top. Now go top. All right, yeah. Can they defend the melee, Rax? No. Shake is TPing in. Yeah, no. <laughs> but they might be able to get a kill afterwards. They can kill Iceberg. That'd okay. Be, that'd be neat. He's dropping low, but he's got the Aegis, so... Okay, the lift. Yeah, they can keep this this stack going. He's so tanky. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's pretty pretty twang. Yeah, because Necro book up in five seconds on the Lycan. Jump in again. All right, they get him. The Shadow Wave finishes him off. Yamich waiting nearby. There is no more heroes seeping into this one on the side of Windstrike, though. And, uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Sunlight taking a ton of damage here. A good burst strike uh, by Rubik. Meanwhile, always want to fly TPs onto this one as well. They will be able to take down Iceberg. Um, Fishman and always want to fly having a fight on the high ground, but they'll look towards Yamich now. The uh, Grimstroke is the target. Meanwhile, Sunlight finished off by the Wolves after that Shallow Grave ends. And oh, Zitrax could be in trouble as in comes the Arc Warden. Silent is here and he's got the damage. Astral just going to be killed off by Spark Rays on the back lines. Zitrax does manage to TP out. The Spectre is gone, but still not looking great. And now the Burrow Strike comes in onto Fishman as well. And this, well, they've okay. got the buybacks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'll be honest. It feels, it feels really bad. I'm so gutted for them because I, know. I said at the end of game one last game when they lost in 16 minutes. They're just going to want him to make sure they put in a good performance here. You know, if they lose, whatever, just try your best. Like, you want to be playing your best. But when you lose like this and you, you you feel like you're not playing your best, it's just so sad. Well, there's Zitrax doing not a bad job of tanking on the front lines, but not nearly a good enough job. He's got very low. They heal him up. They're keeping him alive. The soul... Ooh, yeah, they get him. They get him inside the Ancient. He does go down. Longrada gets a double kill. There's no more buyback on the Spectre. And now Windstrike can just focus on taking their buildings as the final set of racks. Oh, actually, not the final set of racks, but the final tier three falls. And uh, Windstrike, they take game two, I would say. Is, is, is it not too yet. early to call? Not yet. <laughs> They've got Echo in two seconds. All right, Echo. Let's see, Sunlight. Don't walk into a Spark Wraith this time. Good job. But the Wrath of Nature is going to cancel it for now. Iceberg just doing his job. Oh, now the no. bow strike forwards. <laughs> the wolf was on him as well. Sunlight, he's trapped inside the trees. Does have a Quelling Blade to break out of it, though. Should be surviving for now. And GG is called by Zitrax. They just decide, we don't want to do this anymore. We don't want to make that one last play. And good luck next is Call of the Amiga with a pretty tragic end to their Bucharest minor qualifier journey. But hey, they made it to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, that's not what they would have wanted, though. You know, they want to... Like I said, they want to be performing your best. You want to put up a good show in these kind of games, and we we haven't really seen it from them today. That's a, that's a real shame. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. I mean, you know, people don't believe us. This is this is probably the most viewers they've had on the stream, but um, on, on one of their games. But um, they have played better than this. They have, and it's sad to see them go out so brutally. But I mean, let, let let's look to the other side though. Win strike. They're looking pretty good, right? Yeah, Windstrike look really good. But when Windstrike look good, they look good. Yeah. But yeah. when they look bad, they look really bad. <laughs> they, do, so they do look very They bad. are very up and down. Uh, who are they playing? Is it Empire Hope they're playing next? Uh, yes. Yes. So, so that should be a pretty good okay. game. Okay. Empire Hope, they... they... Oh, I'm not sure if they beat Windstrike in the major qualifiers. I think they might have, you know. I can't remember now. You got a laptop? All right. Oh, Production! <laughs> That, that, I'll have a look. It, I'll have a look. I'll get to it. Don't worry. I'll have a look. <laughs> all right. All right. He's going to do it. Um, so let's have a quick look at the uh, brackets right now. Uh, so that means that your boys uh, win strike winning this game here. Got to come oh. through. This doesn't update, by the way. <laughs> don't, don't be silly. I'll tell you, actually, maybe it will update. Wait, give me one second. Talk, talk for a bit. You're just going to start pinning things on the wall? Yeah. Are you actually going to do this? Jesus. This is real high production quality here. Uh, I'm trying to search something on Nomad's laptop, but... It, it's it's, it's slow. so slow. It's nothing's loading. Oh, so uh, you're not going to find out what happened in the major qualifiers. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think Empire Hope against Windstrike is an interesting one because Empire Hope played pretty well uh, in the major qualifiers. They uh, they were doing a lot of kind of like cool PA stuff as well. Um, they, it didn't end up going through, obviously, but they they had some good showings. Um, obviously, they're the Empire Hope squad. They're supposed to be the B team, and uh, they're the ones that are outperforming the A team. At the yeah, yeah, they're doing, they're doing pretty well. Um, obviously, Ooh. it didn't look so hot yesterday. They did get pretty dismantled by Gambit, who are looking awfully strong, has to be said. Um, I believe it was both games under 25 minutes. I think one game went to, like, 19. The other one went to, like, 23. So, 
yeah, didn't didn't look fantastic from them. But hopefully they'll have a better showing today. I mean, I'm excited for this matchup because Windstrike and Empire are very much on the same level right now. Yeah, I would say so. They're both quite volatile, though, it feels like. I feel like the draft's really important for both these teams, making sure they can have a good start. But Windstrike, you know, they're going to have the momentum boost now after that uh, that last series. Hopefully it doesn't go too far, though, where they get overconfident, because you know what happens then. But uh, <laughs> hopefully they can, you know, just keep going forward. I like that they're playing with this Art Warden as well. Feels like they, they, they play around it quite well. Um, they, Iceberg likes making space for this uh, Silent Arc Warden to farm in most games usually. So I expect uh, more Silent Arc Warden to come. Uh, they had a bit of a dodgy start to the patch, it felt like Windstrike, but maybe they're, they're starting to find their feet again. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, this push lineup is looking. It's a good look for them. It is. Um, whether they're going to be able to pull that off against uh, some of the other teams who may be uh, playing slightly better today, because, you know, full credit to Amiga, they've. they've come decently far but um that is not the amiga we we've used to seeing so if if you know empire more on the ball i'm not sure if the same strat is going to work against them yeah i think uh especially yeah teams like gambit and empire hope it's uh, a little bit more difficult they're going to have stronger lanes than the amiga did in these last two games All right. they're not gonna they're gonna make sure they don't lose in 20 minutes both times hold on so now it's for the live bracket update Jesus. can they even see what you've written on the bit of paper is that Top quality production. <laughs> there you go. Your bracket is updated, and uh, that's that's what the what the standings look like now. As Windstrike make it through, uh, beating out um, beating out the Mega, and now they'll play soft versus uh, Team Empire Hope. So we will find oh. out. And I'm hoping that Team uh, that Windstrike Jeez. are going to make it through to the grand final. So I don't have to write another sign. That's that's <laughs> that's where my money is. Uh, alrighty. After that phenomenal segment, we're going to be back after a short break. Uh, for that's going to be Windstrike versus Team Empire Hope. I do hope you, you'll join us. As I will see you very shortly. <laughs> 